What's going on guys and welcome to another episode of the Crack a Pack series, the last one for this week. We are opening up a pack of Fate Reforged today. Unfortunately not the best uh, in terms of value in my opinion, but there are a couple cards that are actually pretty exciting. So hopefully we get something cool out of this one. We will go through this as if it is a draft perspective, so hopefully we'll be able to determine what a good pack one pick one would actually be. Uh, this was very much focused on three color pairings. I just want to point that out. So if I favor gold cards a little bit more, that is why I'm not super worried about being as pigeonholed uh, as I normally would be in a regular draft set. So with that, our first card here is Warflare. It's an instant for two, a red and a white. Creatures you control get plus two, plus one until the end of the turn. You also untap those creatures. I actually love cards like this. These Anthem effects that really boost up your team give you such a great way to end a game. Not only that, but because this untaps those creatures, it can also be used as like a surprise combat trick. You can swing in with all of your creatures if you want, knowing that your opponent may not block or want to do something on the swing back. And then on your turn, or excuse me, when your opponent's turn when they attack you, you can actually use this untap all your creatures and boost them all up and then be able to really do some damage on blocks. So it's actually a very, very lucrative card. I like this one a lot. Very much focused on a go-wide strategy though, and I tend to want to favor being in that strategy before getting a card like this. Uh, but definitely interesting, and I will keep it here for now. Uh, Soul Summons is a sorcery. Uh, manifest the top card of your library, so when you manifest a card, you put it onto the battlefield face down as a 2-2 creature. You can turn it up face up uh, at any time for its mana cost, only if it is a creature card, so you can't do that with an instant sorcery or something like that. Uh, this is fine. Uh, it's an interesting card. I did not find this to be very useful when I was drafting, drafting this set. Uh, sometimes you would hit a land or sometimes you'd hit something like that. Late game, it does next to nothing unless you hit a really good card. Uh, and so I'm really not a, a huge fan of something like that. Uh, so for that reason, usually don't pick that. Uh, Sultai Skullkeeper is a 2-1 for 1 and a blue. When it enters the battlefield, put the top two cards of your library into your graveyard. There are some instances where this is actually super, super useful. Uh, delve is definitely a thing in this set, so being able to delve out something very, very powerful early uh, by, f by filling up your graveyard with something like this is great. Very much would rather have the Delve card first, uh, because generally speaking, this is a very bad card. Uh, milling yourself doesn't do anything on the just in normal gameplay, and it is still only a 2-1 two, for 2, so I really don't like that. Uh, so not super interested yet. <laughs> uh, Reach of Shadows is an instant for 4 and a black. Destroy target creature that's one or more colors. Uh, so the only thing this doesn't hit are, are colorless artifact creatures, things like that. Uh, there are definitely instances it doesn't hit morph is the biggest thing here uh, because morph technically is a colorless creature so for that reason it doesn't hit everything but it is actually really really useful uh, this is a perfectly fine removal spell it's instant speed so I really like that yes it's conditional uh, but the condition just means that it needs a color and there's a lot of stuff that has a color so I like that for sure I think that's definitely the pick so far <laughs> Uh, Harsh Sustenance is an instant for one, a white, and a black. Deals X damage to target creature or player, and you gain X life, where X is the number of creatures you control. Again, very similar to Warflare that this is perfect in a go-wide strategy, because if you have a lot of creatures, it's going to be really easy to, to deal a lot of damage. Use this as a removal spell, maybe use this as the spell to finish the game. A lot of options there, which I like a lot, but I'd rather have the creature mass before having a card like this, because if you don't have enough creatures, this really doesn't do that much. Uh, it doesn't hit enough things, it's not that great, and so for that reason, I like it. Very, very powerful. Not something I'm going to pick up early. Uh, right into being is a sorcery for two and a blue look at the top two cards of your library Manifest one of those cards and then put the other on the top or the bottom of your library again manifesting Putting it down as a face down uh, two two colorless creature uh, Again, I think this is better uh, than soul summons just because you can actually pick and choose a little bit Give yourself a little bit more of an option and then you also basically get a scry So you're able to look at the top card and make sure uh, if it's something you want, you leave it on top. If it's not, you throw it to the bottom. Gives you a little bit of filtering. I like that. 
probably, in fact, definitely not more than Reach of Shadows. I'd much rather just have a straight up kill spell uh, because this this has a chance of whiffing where Reach of Shadows really doesn't have the best option or it doesn't have, uh, excuse me, a huge issue with whiffing. If your opponent doesn't have a, a colored uh, creature, it's probably not the biggest deal in the world because it's probably just a 2-2 at this point. So uh, I'd much rather have that though uh, than right into being for sure. Uh, Goblin Heel Cutter is a 3-2 for 3 and a red. When it attacks, target creature cannot block this turn. You can also dash it for 2 and a red. So you can cast it for its dash cost. If you do, it gains haste and it's returned from the battlefield to the, your owner's hand at the beginning of the next instep. So it basically can be played uh, a turn early. Uh, and it doesn't stick around, so you have to then replay it the next turn. I actually really like this card, though. This is super, super aggressive. Uh, make sure that something on your opponent's side of the field can't block, so it makes sure you're getting in for as much damage as possible. A lot of upside to something like this, so I kind of feel like I'd rather have this than the Reach of Shadows. That might be the incorrect pick uh, because Reach of Shadows is just a really solid removal spell. Uh, but I tend to, tend to want to be a little more aggressive in draft if I can. And this just really, really allows that. So for sure, I think that's going to be uh, so far the pick. Uh, Map the Waste is a sorcery for two and a green. Search your library for a basic land card, put it onto the battlefield tapped, and then you shuffle your library. You then also bolster one. So you choose a creature with the least toughness among creatures you control and you put a plus one plus one counter on it a lot of bolster synergies uh, that went on in this set so it is actually a very powerful mechanic uh, but this isn't necessarily the most exciting card in the world it does fix you a little bit which is nice you can get any uh i believe any basic land excuse me that you would like uh, and so if you're in multiple colors which you most likely will be in this set uh, that gives you some options that make sure that you're going to get to your colors, which is nice. Uh, and then you bolster one so it buffs up some of your creatures. I think that's fine. Don't really like it as an early pick, though. It just doesn't do enough, uh, in my opinion. If you are in multiple colors, though, this is definitely going to be the kind of card you want. Uh, collateral damage is an instant for one red. As an additional cost to, uh, to cast it, you sacrifice a creature and it deals three damage to target creature or player. This is a perfectly fine removal spell. It's very, very efficient. You, of course, do have to sack a creature. Generally speaking, uh, if you've got like a morphed card that's not something super exciting, you just sacrifice that. Uh, it's going to be one of the lower costed cards and it's not going to be doing much late game. Uh, and so this is a perfectly fine card. I still like the heel cutter better. It impacts the board right away, gives you a little bit more of an aggressive uh, position in the game. Collateral damage, definitely a very good removal spell though. One I would very much like to pick up in the same deck that I'm playing the heel cutter, to be honest. <laughs> Uh, formless Nurturing is a sorcery for three and a green. Manifest the top card of your deck, then put a plus one, plus one counter on it. So it comes in basically as a three, three. I don't really like this card. Uh, again, I'm not a huge fan of the cards that just kind of manifest the top of your deck because a lot of times they just aren't going to get anything worthwhile. Sometimes you're just going to get land and sometimes that's fine. Uh, but certainly I would much rather hit a creature that I can then flip over and get some really good value out of. Uh, and so for that reason, because you're so subject to the top of your deck, not super excited by that. Uh, our first uncommon is Sibsig Mugdrag Muck Draggers. Uh, it is a 3 6 4 8 and a black, which is huge, but uh, it does have delve, so you can exile a card from your graveyard while casting this, and it lowers the, ca the casting cost by one generic mana. When it enters the battlefield, return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. That's also a really powerful ability. Uh, I certainly like this, but it is a 3 6 for a lot of mana. Uh, not a big fan of that. It's also kind of counterproductive on its own. So it, it's asking you to delve to play this card, which you would very much have to, uh, and then return a card from your graveyard to the, to, uh, your hand, which is fine, but you just had to delve a bunch of them away. Uh, so I kind of don't like that. It kind of makes sure that it's a little bit more tricky to play, which I don't like. Uh, so I definitely would take the heel cutter over it. Uh, Abzan Kinguard is a 3-3 for 3 and a green. Uh, it has lifelink as long as you control a white or black permanent. Uh, Abzan is the color pairing for green, white, and black, which is why this obviously has that ability. Uh, and it's perfectly fine. It's a 3-3 with potentially lifelink, uh, most likely lifelink, uh, for 3 and a green. Again, it's easy to be 3 color in this set, and so that's not super difficult to do. 
I'm not a huge fan of it. Uh, it just doesn't seem like it's that impactful. It's still just a 3-3. Three, three. Uh, and for four mana, you'd kind of want a little bit more. Uh, but it's fine. It's a perfectly serviceable card. Not more important, in my opinion, than the heel cutter for sure. Uh, Vault Breaker is a 4-2 for three and a uh, red, excuse me. When it attacks, you may discard a card, and if you do, you draw a card. This has dash as well for two and a red. I actually really like this. It kind of keeps you going in a red deck, which is, uh, these are actually the Mardu, uh, this is the Mardu symbol. These are kind of in the black, white, and red uh, synergies. Really, really aggressive synergy. I like it a lot. Uh, this keeps you going a little bit because it gives you some outlets to drawing cards in a color combo that doesn't necessarily draw that many cards. So I like that. Honestly, I kind of like the heel cutter still. Uh, I don't know if that's correct though. Uh, I think probably the vault breaker is better. Uh, it deals a little bit more damage right off the bat. It can die pretty quickly, which sucks. Uh, but honestly, so can the heel cutter. So I think I'm going to go with vault breaker so far and then our rare. Oh, cool. Soulfire Grandmaster. So this is an interesting card. It is a 2-2 two, two, for one and a white. It has lifelink and then instant and sorcery spells you control have lifelink. Uh, so anything that deals damage basically also gains you that life back, which is great. Uh, and then you can pay two and then hybrid, uh, two hybrid of either blue or red. The next time you would cast an instant or sorcery spell from your hand this turn, you can put that card into your hand instead of your graveyard as it resolves. So you can get double usage, if not more, uh, out of a singular card. I honestly think this is such a powerful ability uh, that I would probably take this. This opens you up to being able uh, to take some of these instants and sorcery spells and then be able to get so much use out of them. It's just fantastic. So I think that's where I would lean. Uh, we did not get a foil. The Vault Breaker and the Heel Cutter are both very aggressive cards that I like quite a lot. So I could understand taking those uh, and potentially even being just the right pick. Uh, but I would definitely try the Soulfire Grandmaster. But again, feel free to uh, leave a comment in the comment section below if you disagree. Uh, but with that, I'm going to get out of here. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. And as always, please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. But I'm out, guys. I'll see you in the next Crack a Pack episode.